turkey. Yes, I do. Oh, hey, I didn't realize you guys had come by to see me today. Well, Thanksgiving is coming. Thanksgiving has happened. Thanksgiving is gone. And now, November 27th is when we are starting Native American Heritage Day and Native American Heritage Month. So we're going to take a look at a couple of quick facts about this day and then take a look at some Native American percussion instruments and also a song and other resources that you can use throughout this month and through this lesson. So what is Native American Heritage Month? Um, originally, in 1990, President George H.W. Bush approved a joint resolution designating November in 1990 the National American Indian Heritage Month. There have been similar proclamations since and in the year 1994. Later on, in 2009, President Barack Obama signed the Native American Heritage Day resolution designating the Friday after Thanksgiving as Native American Heritage Day. So now that we've got a couple of quick facts about Native American Heritage Day and some resources you can use to find more information, we're going to take a look at Native American percussion instruments. Alright, taking a look at Native American percussion, this slide comes from the rabbit song in Quaver Music. If you are a Quaver user, you have full access to this. Um, but I'm just going to show you some similarities to some instruments that you can use if you don't have access to Quaver or don't have access to some of these Native American instruments. So the first are pellet bells. Um, they look like this and sound like this. And for a similar use in your classroom, you can use a pair of wrist bells, wrist jingles or these other pairs here that have just the Velcro. And you can get these from Wesco. Another one is the Sistrum. It's a frame and handle instrument. And I would equate that to a tambourine. Apparently my tambourine is not even open yet. But again, we have that frame and the bells. So they don't sound exactly the same, but it's a good equivalent if you don't have access to the full Native American instruments. These, I'm sure we all have, the egg shakers. And I'm gonna read this interesting fact that says, although, Introduced in Latin America, many Native Americans today use the egg shaker as an inexpensive and durable substitute or in addition to the traditional handmade rattles. One other instrument we're going to look at is the small tepanazali. Here's what it sounds like. And as an equivalent in your classroom, if you don't have it, you can use a set of these blocks. And those are just some of the Native American percussion instruments and equivalents that you can use in your classroom. Now we are going to get ready to work on a fun song that I've loved teaching every year when I get into my units about Native American music. So if you head on over to Teachers Pay Teachers, the first is going to be this Thanksgiving Native American music resource. It is a free resource and as you when you go to the site and click the link that I will include in the video and in the description, you get full access to the Google Slides. So when you go and search for it and it comes up, you just click Add to Google Drive, it'll add to your Google Drive, and then you have access to all the resources that this person has put together. Um, Music Makes Us Happy is who has created this one. We'll also be taking a look at My Paddles Keen and Bright and talking about what a round is, what is a round in music. This link will also be included, and you can purchase it for 99 cents. So, rounds versus cannons. My definition, and what I've understood and what I've learned, is that a round means there are different voices entering at different times, singing the same melody, and then repeating over and over and over again until given the stop or the cutoff by the conductor or director. Whereas a cannon, 
is similar, the melody is imitated or copied by different voice parts that start at a different time, but with the canon, when the main line is over, that person or that group stops singing. So with the round, we're still going and going and going and going and going until the conductor gives us the stop, whereas as the canon, each different voice part will start at a different time, but then when they end their phrase, the entire piece is done. So now, we're going to take a look at the melody line from My Paddle's Keen and Bright, and then we're going to look at some ways we can use percussion with this composition. All right, taking a look at My Paddle's Keen and Bright, some ways you can use some percussion and other types of things without or throughout your lesson, rather. So, first thing I want to start is a percussion or drum rhythmic ostinato. We're going to go one, two, and one, two, or ta, ta, di, 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 ta. So we're going to start that with that percussion. And once that's going, you can use your orphan instruments. I'm going to use my piano here just for today's purposes, but we're here in the key of D minor, so your two notes for your ostinato will be D and A, and it'll be the same rhythm, ta, ta, di, ta, ta, di. So you can layer in percussion, then layer in your ostinato, kids are really advanced, you could have them start the melody line on a xylophone. Or if that's not for you, you can just have them start singing once you've got everybody going. Here we go. My paddle's keen and bright, flushing was keen and bright, flushing the one is bright, dashing the same 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 is bright, dashing the So again, our opening rhythm. Your low voice ostinato. You can even add some metals to do, you know, another part as well. You can do open fifths with them on just quarter notes or half notes. Or you can do that same thing with octaves. So there's just a couple of ideas that you can add to My Paddles Keen and Bright as you get that going. So again, we're using this as a round. So your percussion and your ostinato are always going to keep going until you give everybody the cutoff. And the way that's going to work is out of the four verse, out of the four lines rather, as everybody's going, you start line one. My paddle's keen and bright, and group one's going to keep going. As group one gets to the second verse, flashing with silver, that's when you'll start group number two. Same thing for group three. And group four and as you're going they're just going to keep repeating that over and over and over again keep repeating it over and over and over again when you want your groups in this round to stop so you're going to look at group one and you notice they're getting to 
dip, dip, and swing. So you're gonna give them that hold, the fermata, the hold right here. You're gonna give them that hold to hold that D. Dip, dip, and swing. And as group two is finishing, follow the wild goose fly. Dip, dip, and swing. Holding group two. Group three is coming along. Follow the wild goose fly. Dip, dip, and swing. Group three is holding there now too. And group four is coming along. Follow the wild goose fly. Dip, dip, and swing. And now group four has that fermata. Everybody's on the same note. And we cut them off. All right. So let me know how it goes. It's gonna be an awesome lesson, it's gonna be an awesome singing experience. Feel free to add any of those other percussion instruments that we talked about as well in the beginning of our lesson. Thanks so much for coming by today. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day learning and teaching about music. Bye-bye now.